Okay, so we're looking. Okay, so we're looking now at another sort of patterns, mm. and these are called geometric sequences. So, previously with arithmetic sequences, uh, you had patterns where it was a constant add or subtract. This time, it's going to be a constant multiply. So, for instance, in the pattern three, six, twelve, twenty-four, we start with three, and then we just double the numbers in sequence. Okay, and these are called geometric sequences, and they actually have a lot more applications in real life than arithmetic sequences okay so, <coughs> so we've got 2 6 12 24 so just like we had in ap's arithmetic progressions uh, these are going to be called gps as distinct from ap's so each of these numbers is called a term so t1 is the first term um, t4 1 2 3 4 so t4 is 24 etc so each of them has a name and we just put the subscript just like we have with ap's okay to copy and come across. Okay, so what we need to look for um, is just a few more term terminologies. So just like we had in the first one, the first term, the first term is still called A, okay, just like we had in APs. But this multiply difference, um, rather than calling it a D, we call it an R, okay, so it's called the common ratio. So in APs, so when we had APs, we had A's and D's. Now in GPs, we have A's and R's, okay? Um, so for instance, with one minus four, 16 minus 64, the first term is A, and then to find the ratio, just divide two terms in a row. So minus four divided by one, so T2 divided by T1, or T3 divided by T2, and that will give you the ratio, okay? So these two terms could be divided, or those two terms could be divided, and you'll still get the same R value. Okay, so come across when you're ready. Okay, so we need to find a formula so we can find any term in the sequence so we don't have to just laboriously double, 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 or triple, or whatever. So just at the end of the day, there's a formula. So we start off with A, and then we multiply by R, then we multiply by another R, then we multiply by another R. So the first term just has A, the second term just has one R, the third term has two R's, the fourth term has three R's. So when you have any number term, it always has A, R, and then it's one less power than the number of the term. Okay, so that's the formula that we're going to use. So with APs, just to remind you, when we had TN, it was A plus N minus 1D. Now with GPs, we've got TN equals A times R to the N minus 1. Okay, and you've got to make sure you get, don't get them muddled up. Okay, so let's, have, let's see how we can use it. Um, so we've got a quarter, a half, one, dot, 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 find T10. So the first thing you do is A is the first number, and to find R, just divide two successive terms. Now, to make sure it's a GP, divide those numbers and you get two, divide those numbers and you get two. So we've got the same R. You've got to have the same R, otherwise it's not a GP. So T10 will be AR, one less power, okay? So one less power than the 10, so it's a quarter times two to nine, and it's just use your calculator, the yeah, answer's 128. Copy and come across. Okay, so we've got a few examples to go through. So which term in the sequence three, six, 12 is the first one to exceed 1,000? So you could just keep the pattern going and just do guess and check. So what I'm doing is trying to do it systematically. So I write a little, a little legend. So A is 3, R is 2, it's been doubled. We don't know N, but we want the term to exceed 1,000. So we just set up an equation, or actually an inequation, because we want to be greater than. So A, R to the N minus 1, we don't know N, so we can't subtract yet to be greater than 1,000. So the first step is you've got to get rid of the 3, so just divide by 3 on both sides, and then you get that number. And then this is an indice, okay? So what we're going to do is... Uh, we're going to use, rather than using, we could use guess and check, but we're going to use, we'll use logs. So we've got the power, okay, the power equals log of the answer divided by log of the base, and you get, end up with 8.38 on your calculator, and then you've got to get rid of the minus 1, so you add 1 to both sides to get 9.38. So n is greater than 9.38, and because n has to be an integer, the first number that's greater than 9.38 is 10, so that means that T10 is the first to exceed 1,000. 
Well, you could check your answer. So T10 equals A times R to the power of 9, and whatever that no answer is, um, I've got my calculator with me, but it'd be greater than 1,000. Okay. Mo uh, copy and come across. Okay, so <coughs> this is the, another sort of equation. Uh, so question where you're given clues, and I actually could have done this with AP, but I forgot. So we need to find A, R, and and then just find a, a random term. So T2 would be A, R to the power of 1, and T7 would be A, R to the power of 6. Okay, so that's the first thing you need to work out. And then what we need to do is, like simultaneous equations, we've got two unknowns and we've got two equations so we can solve them. Okay, so the trick with these ones is we're going to divide to get rid of the A. So if I've got A, R, 6 over A, R, 1, the A's cancel out, and then R6 divided by R1 equals R5, and then we say, well, hang on, R5 is T7 divided by T2, which equals 32, and then on your calculator, the fifth root of 32, which is the same as 32 to the power of one-fifth, and on your calculator, that equals 2. Okay, so the fifth root to get rid of the 5 here, you take the 5th root, or it's a fractional indice. So we've got R equals 2, okay? And then we just sub into one of the equations. So we've got AR to the power of 1 equals a half. So A times 2 equals a half. And then divide both sides by 2, so you get A equals a quarter. So that's our second answer. So we've got that now. And then to finish off, we've got to find a random term because I want you to. So we've got AR to the power of 9, A is 2, oh sorry, beg your pardon, A is a quarter, A is a quarter, 2 to the power of 9, so on your calculator, a quarter times 512 equals, that's 512. And I think that equals 128, but I haven't got my calculator with me, so I hope that's the right answer. Okay, so that's the end of that video. And then there's exercise 5D, uh, which is recognising patterns, recognising GPs, and then this one's finding terms. Okay, so I hope you get on with that. Okay, thanks. Bye.